Hi everyone, my name is Renee. I'm the Student Recruiter Advisor for North Island College based on the Campbell River campus. Today, I'm really excited to be talking to one of our main instructors, Pat Carl Plotz, to discuss our metal fabricator program. So hi, Carl, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Renee, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about metal fabrication. I know, yeah, let's dive on in then. So we have two programs essentially that are around metal fabrication. Um, so we'll dive on in. So again, this is a metal fabricator information session for North Island College. Um, so our first program is our metal fabricator foundation harmonized. And if all those words are a little bit confusing, don't worry, because we're going to explain it all. It's a long name. Um, but this program, as well as our apprenticeship levels, are at the Campbell River campus. Um, this cohort is going to be starting in October 2020. Uh, and it's 23 weeks in length for the first year program. So applications are open. Um, and before we dive into like the foundation versus the apprenticeship level, Carl, can you explain what is metal fabrication? That is a great question. And I get that a lot, um, usually from uh, people within the, the classroom, say in, in Weldon, they, everyone wants to know what metal fabrication is. And what I tell them usually, it's it's the process of forming metal, shaping metal, uh, shearing metal, sizing metal, uh, you know, into usable objects that, that are needed by industries, by the world, basically. Um, you know, basically you're you're creating uh, things out of out of different metals, whether it's aluminum or, or steel or titanium. You know, any kind of metal you can think of is what a, a metal fabricator deals with, depending on the industry. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I often have a lot of students ask me, like you noted, you know, what's the difference between welding and metal fabrication? Because as a welder, of course, they're, you know, building things and welding thing, pieces of metal together to create a product. So how are these two different pieces? I would say that the, the biggest difference that, that I tell people is that a welder, you're really specialized in fusing these uh, pieces together in the project. Like you're, you're using different processes to weld the, the metal together. But as a fabricator, you're measuring, you're using the math, you're reading the blueprints, you're building the piece. Uh, you're still using different welding processes to say, put the piece together, to tack it together. Uh, but you're the one building that object uh, as a fabricator. Great, awesome. Thanks for that clarification. I think that really helps position the two different types of training for sure. Um, so just to note, uh, our Metal Fabricator Foundation Program is essentially a more in-depth um, equivalent to the Red Seal training for this trade as a level one. So often in trades training, there's the apprenticeship levels, level one, two, three, et cetera. Um, so this, the foundation program is, it's a longer program than typical apprenticeship levels, and it gives an opportunity to go much more in depth with the training. Um, so it's really great for students if you've, you've never worked in the sector before, you're brand new to the trade or trades in general, um, it, because it does give you a bit more in depth. Is there anything you wanted to elaborate on it? So, so really, you know, when you complete this program, um, you will be eligible to receive the technical training for the level one uh, metal fabricator apprentice, as well as 450 hours of work support credit towards your apprenticeship hours. Does, does that summarize what the foundation is versus the apprenticeship? Yeah, that's that's true, uh, Renee. Uh, so we go through all the basic skills that you would need to be successful in the metal fab industry, uh, right from safe work practices to using a cutting torch, to using welders, to layout, to reading blueprints, to building. Uh, there's numerous projects we build in the shop. So the idea is that you're ready to go uh, when you get out into industry and you can be successful at, and carry on that apprenticeship. So you, you get the, the jump start basically uh, when, you, when you go to apply for that job in a metal fab shop, you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Great, for sure. And this is also a great starting point um, for students who might not yet be sponsored by an employer, but they want to enter the trade. Yeah, correct. 
Yeah, perfect. All right, so this is again the Metal Fabricator Foundation Program. So it's a good starting point. It's that 23 weeks. Um, and I'll very briefly speak to the admission requirements for this program um, before we dive into the apprenticeship and see how they're kind of interconnected. So the admission requirements for the Metal Fabricator Foundation year, uh, as you can see on the screen, is a C in your English 10 or equivalent and a C in your principles of math 10 or equivalent. I know that lists a lot of courses there. You do not need to have all of them. It's just kind of one or the other, so don't worry there. High school graduation is preferred, but it's not required for this program. Um, as well as we have a lot of students from so many different backgrounds, whether they're coming straight from high school or retraining, maybe worked in a different trade, we can also do assessments uh, to determine your admission into the program in a conversation with the faculty. So just know if you are curious about admissions into the programs, um, we do have some options that I'll be talking about upgrading later. But for now, let's uh, jump on over to apprenticeship for a little bit, and then we'll dive more in depth to the industry in general. So uh, as noted, that foundation year is kind of that starting port, and it's also equivalent to the level one apprenticeship training. Um, but we also offer the Metal Fabricator Apprenticeship Harmonized curriculum. Um, so you can continue on with your levels. Um, the admission requirements for this is you have to be ITA registered apprentice. You need your employer sponsoring you and you have an ITA, like you have your number and you're you know, tracking your hours. Um, is there anything you want to explain about the apprenticeship part of this training for metal fabrication, Coral? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, once, once say, you, if you choose the foundation program and jump over to the apprenticeship program to carry on to the Red Seal, you would be coming back for technical training in the classroom, which is shortened up. So you, you would essentially come back, do your classroom, learn more concepts, advanced metal forming techniques, and then you're back into industry again. Uh, so you would do that for three levels of training. Um, yeah, and then write your red seal and then you're a journey person fabricator essentially and you're ticketed all across Canada. Yeah, so if anyone isn't familiar, this harmonized word that's a part of our program title is essentially getting to what Carl just mentioned. So if you do training in BC, it's going to be recognized all over, especially if you get your red seal. But, you know, if you start in one province or country and then you move for a job, you can still carry it on. And so the nice thing about this harmonized curriculum is that it, it it's the same deal, right? So it matches um, and is recognized across the country, which is really important. So when the jobs and life take us different places, our lives. Um, and just to note that both of these programs, as noted, are both in Campbell River in our shop. Uh, the levels and the schedules vary for this program, but one one thing I think is always so cool with apprenticeship training is once you're in it, like you're you're only going to be dedicating six to seven weeks per level and then you're out back working, getting an income and, you know, getting your hours essentially. So that's also a really nice, um, I always think of a perk with apprenticeship training because you can, you're going back to school for a short amount of time and the rest of your year is you're moving forward in your career. So um, let's talk a little bit more about the metal fabrication industry. So. We're going to talk a little bit about different skills and attributes that, you know, we find students have that are successful in this industry and in this program as well as talk about the working environment um, for the industry. So, Carl, I'll pass it over to you for this. Yeah, so uh, it, in my experience, in my trades experience and with students, um, you know, a lot of the work experience, the work environment, you know, you're in you're indoors in shops working with heavy equipment, you know, cranes and shears and brakes and rolls. Um, so you're you're working on your feet, basically um, hands on, moving steel around, measuring, lifting. Uh, you know, you're you're actively involved in that shop. You know, very hands on. So if you really like that kind of thing. Um, this is where you should be. You know, if you if you're a creative person and you really like solving problems, you know, you're a critical thinker. You like to think ahead, and you know, it, job planning. You got to think about what this object looks like. You know, three dimensionally in your mind even before it exists. And mm -hmm. so, so you apply these skills like math and blueprint reading, and then you take that to the shop floor, and then you're 
you're building it with your hands, which is really cool. Yeah, you're definitely kind of using like that almost like two sides of the brain, right? Like you're really interpreting, analyzing and reading, but then it's how do you translate that, like you said, onto the shop and how do you build that physically? So that's something really cool about this program It is it kind of stimulates both of those aspects. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we also were talking about, you know, some of the skills that we find students have that are successful. We mentioned like critical thinking and problem solving. Um, making sure that you can read those plans. But let's talk a little bit more about some of these other aspects like communication, being team orientated. Um, the creativity piece is cool because you mentioned that there's opportunity that you're gonna have to come up with a solution and figure something out and problem solve. But why might these um, attributes be important to industries such as communication and being team orientated? Yeah, uh, very important traits to have because uh, you, you're going to be involved in the team, whether it's a small team or a large team in a bigger shop or a small shop, um, you're involved with a team of uh, what ranges all the way from the drafting department to the fabricators, like fellow fabricators, team members, to welders, uh, to helpers, like you're, you're a part of that whole process. And you need to be able to convey information to each level of that process uh, for that project to be successful. Uh, you have to be able to bounce ideas off fellow fabricators and welders, you know, just to mm -hmm. make sure that the job goes well. And, you know, the better the job goes, the, the better the company and you look, you know. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. So as we talked about um, the work environment, let's talk about the learning environment and what our students will be doing. So one thing that I think was so cool trades and NAC is the amount of hands on experience students are getting. Obviously, this is a trade. So like the technical skill is so important <laughs> because you need to translate that into the working world. But our classes are also capped um, typically at 16 students. What's our cap for our metal fab program? Yeah, that's the same uh, with Metal Fab Renee. It's uh, 16 students uh, in the shop, and we're we're fairly well, you know, separated in that shop. There's there's a fair amount of shop floor space, so the learning environment uh, it's quite relaxed as far as space goes. There's lots of room to build projects. Um, mm -hmm. There is, of course, uh, classroom time as well, like where you'll be, you know, reading blueprints, doing math. Uh, figuring out, you know, how to build that object and then take it to the shop floor and build the object, you know. So there's mm -hmm. that interaction between classroom and shop, that back and forth uh, learning environment for sure. Yeah. On average, um, how many, like in a day, like a typical student day, how long do you think a student would be in the classroom learning the theory as opposed to in the shop on the tools? I would say uh, it, it would vary depending on where the program is, but uh, Metal Fab has a bit more theory content, uh, say versus like a welding program, which is very hands-on. The Metal Fab, you're, you're drawing in the class, doing math calculations. Um, I would say it, it could vary from uh, one hour to even three hours or more in the classroom and then the remainder being in the shop. Some, sometimes it'll be complete days in the shop for the projects, but uh, you, mm -hmm. you definitely there will be classroom time, uh, which is needed because uh, mm -hmm. that's where all the magic happens. Yeah, that's where you get all the ingredients, essentially. Ingredients, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right, so carrying on, um, maybe you can speak towards like some of the equipment. In the next slide, we have a video of one of the fun tools that you get to play with, but, um, what does this look like, you know, given that there's only 16 students, what I love about our programs is there's so much opportunity to connect with faculty, to learn from faculty, and here, you know, you're shown supporting a student, but can you maybe speak a little bit more to, to that aspect of the program? Yeah, uh, definitely more one-on-one -on -one time with, you know, the instructors, uh, myself. Um, there's more interaction, there's more, uh, room to inquire to learn uh which is great you know if, if you have more more students it's really hard 
to mm -hmm. you know to learn those those tricks, the fine details of the trade, and you know that's where you you pick up on a lot of things uh, from the instructors and from fellow students as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I always love that peer to peer learning and like that problem solving. And it really, that's so important because it sets you up for success when you are, as you noted, in a team environment out in the work, you know, at work, you're going to need to be able to, to collaborate. Let's um, jump to the next video, which I'll let you explain maybe before we start the video, what we're about to see, what it is, and some of the other equipment students use. Yeah, so so some of the equipment and specifically in the, the short little video, um, when you take the metal fab program, uh, you're dealing with all sorts of metal forming equipment. Uh, you need lots of big equipment with, you know, pressure and be able to cut the steel because steel is quite heavy, quite tough. So you, you need these tools to, to work it. Um, in the video, it's it's what they call a computer numerical controlled uh, table, so a CNC table. And what you're able to do is basically use like a program like AutoCAD, which we'll be doing in the program, and you can create anything and transfer that to the, the table and it cuts it out for you. So yeah. to talk about creativity, you know, whatever you can imagine, you can cut out on the table. So, you know, that's, the, that's what we're after as fabricators is to create things. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's jump over and see the video. And I loved that when you were describing it to me, it was the plasma cutter. So you'll you'll see some sparks. So obviously this would be a bit noisier, and we'd have protective equipment on in the shop while we do it. But and apologies if it's a bit grainy. Um, you know, good old cell phone technology. So let's uh let's pause it. But this is a really quick, short video of just like you know students get to do this. This is like what you do in your day. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Uh, you know, plasma, it, it's another method of cutting uh, metal and it, it can cut any kind of metal that conducts electricity, which yeah. is very cool. I love that it's, you know, a, a computer file telling this essentially machine where to cut, how deep to cut, what to cut, and so you get your, your piece of metal that you need, which is, that to me is just so neat. Um, I just want to talk a little bit more broadly about the NAC experience. Um, and Carl, one of the biggest things that we talked about is like the class size being 16 people and the expert faculty. So not only is that environment conducive to learning because you get to learn from the experts and like have those opportunities to chat with your faculty, ask questions. But what I've also found with our faculty is they're so connected to industry. And I think that's something really important to know. What are the trends? What's happening? Where are good companies to work for? What are what are things to consider when you're looking for employers? Um, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah. Um, you know, as far as the faculty goes, we're all really connected to industry. Uh, I myself spent a lot of time in industry, even recently, uh, you know, in shops. And it's, you know, very important, like, to be have that connection with industry for the students, um, you know, to be able to convey the right information to students, the knowledge, to have those connections within industry, to say, you know, you're going to be working here, say, locally at specific shops, and you can talk to that, um, and the student is successful in those shops because, you know, we've made them successful, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also knowing what industry is looking for, right, and making sure that we're, we're, you know, keeping up with it, right? So that's, I think, a huge thing. Um, I will be speaking to some very, very quickly, some other student services that, in addition to your faculty, will support you. Um, so, but before we dive into it, I'm just going to briefly mention our fees. So, tuition is the fee of the, the cost of the program. Uh, NISU is our student union. Um, lab fees just essentially helps us keep all the shops up and going. Now, this book cost, these are all, um, aside from the, so books are a estimate cost, and they, they estimate them quite high, so for, for financial planning purposes. Um, so as we're, as we're noting, like, here's the tuition for that program, for the foundation. And then our apprenticeship levels, it varies per level, so that broken down, and this is all in the program webpage, so you can definitely take a look at it more in depth. So again, tuition is the cost of the program. But with that, 
Um, we have financial aid advisors who can support students making a financial plan. There's lots of different grants and funding opportunities for trade students, we have bursaries and scholarships through NAC as well. Um, so as you're considering programs, obviously finances is a huge part of that decision-making process. So we do know that we have dedicated financial aid advisors to support you. But some other services uh, that we have, and we work very closely with faculty as well to support students. So there's a lot of, you know, we're not just faculty are off by themselves doing things and then stuff. We work very collaboratively together. So we also have student employment advisors who help you with resumes and preparing for interviews. We work with the ITA's um, apprenticeship advisors. We have personal counseling, Aboriginal advisors. Um, Pretty much anything you could need. So if at any point you're struggling in the process, know that we there are supports for students. We also have a Department of Accessible Learning. So they provide a wide range of services and resources for students with different learning needs. And of course, we have our library and learning commons. So math is obviously a component to this program. Um, we have math support. So you can get math tutoring. We also have writing tutoring, peer tutoring, tech support, which I use frequently <laughs> and at research support but obviously that math for this program might be something really key um, and they're all offered on campus as well so when you're you know if you're a student you're accessing this you can just pop down get that support and, and carry on um did you have anything to add around services um carl i know like we all work you know collaboratively and ask you frequently like is there anything we can support you with um but kind of to go on from there yeah, I, I think just to add, add to the math component, uh, we were talking about that, you know, it's really important in metal fab to be fairly proficient at, at math prior to entering. Um, yeah. you know, uh, math, math is what I tell all the students is math is another tool in your toolbox. And, you know, we, we sharpen it up pretty good. Uh, for the math <laughs> program. You know, it's very Perfect. important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, earlier, I mentioned the admission requirements. So, if you're excited about metal fabrication as a program, but maybe you don't quite meet the admission requirements, come chat with me. Come chat with our advisors. Again, you might have some. You might be able to be assessed or have prior learning. But we also offer upgrading of the college, and it is tuition free. So this could just be one step, you know, towards a career that you could you might really love. So, have a conversation with us. Um, you can always talk with Carl and kind of an ending. Our contact information is on the screen. Um, you are always more than welcome to call or email us. Um, we love chatting with students and helping you figure out if this is the right fit of program for you. We want to see you successful and ultimately enjoy the program. It doesn't serve anyone if you're not in a program that fulfills you. Um, but Carl, with closing, is there anything you'd like to add or emphasize in regards to our metal fabrication programs, the foundation or apprenticeship? Uh, I, I, I think what's really uh, important if, if you're really keen on metal fab or welding come on down to the shop uh, we'd be happy to show you around to show you show you what goes on you know the learning environment if you have any concerns or questions or you're excited about it you know come on down and you know we're, we're happy to talk feel free to contact me uh, to ask any questions you know about metal fab uh, if, once again if you love creating if you're a creative person, uh, you love building hands-on in metal, this, this is where you need to be. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so thanks again, Carl. And again, if there's any students out there who want to learn more information, the first step is just to reach out to us and we'll, we'll you know, figure out what you need and what your questions are as we go. Um, and hopefully we'll all be back on campus soon so we can really you know, celebrate and learn together and be in our shops because that's where all the fun is really happening, right? All right, thank you so much. I hope you all have a great day and uh, hope to see you in the fall. Cheers, bye.